everyone, my name is Rhonda Robson and welcome to my Fluid Art channel. I'm a fluid artist in the middle of the United States of America in Sioux City, Iowa. Today we're going to do a balloon pour, but then that balloon pour is going to become a wine glass. And I can't wait to show you this one. This one's really cool. It's actually on a larger wine glass and compared to the ones I've done in my previous videos. All right, so the first thing you do is you're going to want to put on your pillow paint. And I use Sherwin-Williams Semi-Gloss Ultra White. Then I'm going to put in the colors that I want to use. And each color that I use, I do three parts Sherwin-Williams Base C to two parts Min Wax Polyacrylic. And then I do a one-to-one -one ratio with the paint to that mix. Now it depends with your paints on how thick they are. So you may need to add a little bit of polyacrylic or you could add some water too. So I'm just layering these um, with the dark and the light, the dark and the light, and then I'm ending here with gold. And the next thing I'm gonna do is my cell activator. And it's three parts American Floetrol to one part Amsterdam black paint to one part glue all and six drops of Minwax wood conditioner. And once you put your cell activator on, whether it's in the middle or to the side, you're gonna blow down and then across the colors. You you want to force the paint down into the pillow paint and allow it to bounce back up. That helps create those cells and that web effect that a balloon has. So using your air, whether it's your own air or you use a hair dryer or some other type of blowing device, again, you blow down and across the paint. So if you find some of your cell activator, whether it's this black that I'm using today or your white or whatever color, that it's too much, you just continue to blow down into that pillow paint and it'll push up some cells. Okay, so don't do too much because then you're going to blow right into that white. And then what I do is once I get my design, I kind of take a look at it and I decide if I need to blow more or if I want to add a little bit of a design using some type of a sharp object. I just happen to use a skewer, which is actually, I think you know, a um, shish kebab skewer. And I just kind of do some curly cues throughout. And each one is slightly different, but I always want to make sure that the black is, there's not too much of the cell activator, not too much of a different color. And so then I take my skewer and I just swirl it through. And then you just slowly start to turn your device, whatever you're gonna to use to turn your paint. And this one I did two different directions. I went one way and then I went another way and then I went back the other direction. So it depends on kind of what you're looking for. I saw a little bit of an opportunity to maybe take a balloon and smash it and see how that kind of came out. And it didn't do great, so I just, did a couple more to push down. I felt like I needed to push really down and out to suction cup that paint up. And, and I decided eh, I'm not gonna do any more to this. I don't wanna do anything else, but I wanna soften that. So I spin it out just a little bit more again to get the final end results that you see there. So that's the wet results, right? But I'm gonna show you the dried results here in just a minute. So one last spin to soften everything out to get it straight stretched out, not have too much paint on there. And that is the wet results, really pretty. And this next picture is the dried results. Actually, I have taken the skin off the tile there, and then this is the end result of the wine glass. Isn't it gorgeous? It is so pretty. Stay tuned if you want to see how I create the wine glasses from the paint skins. I have my steps 2 through 10 next. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now. Bye! So the next step is to peel the paint off and of course after it dries. And I was able to allow these to dry just 24 hours. But I take my X-Acto knife or the utility knife and I go from corner to corner. And again, corner to corner. Then you can just take the utility knife and kind of peel up one corner and just slowly peel the skin off of the tile. It is as easy as that. Seriously, these are super easy to do. So let me just show you another one. I love this one. So pretty. Love it. All right, so you go from corner 
to corner. And you can kind of see how I have my thumb on the blade. It helps me to guide it. Notice how my hand is also off to the side, out of the way from the blade. And then I just peel it from the corner and I peel it all the way off. I love it. Look at that shimmer. So pretty. Can't wait to put that underneath a glass. So I have my Liquitex gloss medium. Uh, I have that off to the side here. I've got my scissors. I've got my exacto um, knife. I have a glass, a wine glass, and I've got my tape. So the first thing I do is I kind of decide what I really like for the bottom. So this one, I definitely want the bottom there. And so I grab my X-Acto knife and I open it up and lock it in place. I put my hand on top of the glass and then I take my sharp knife, my sharp X-Acto knife, and I go around it. Now, you're gonna notice that my glass accidentally slips from time to time, so you've gotta be careful. I don't put my hand down here because I'm afraid that my sharp utility knife, X-Acto knife, will cut me. So I keep my hand up above and I cut from the top. So I just take it and go around and cut from the top. Okay, so I got this mostly cut out and then I wanna go ahead and do my second one. So this is my second one. I wanna do two. I'm doing two glasses at once with one tile, with one tile skin or one skin tile. And it doesn't have to be exact or perfect because I'm gonna use the scissors next. So then I take those two things and I put them off to the side and I take off my circle. So you can kind of see that it's not exact, right? Around there. And then sometimes you're gonna notice that you didn't cut it all the way through, like that one right there. And that's what my scissors are for, is just to kind of, you see the edges, um, indented in there and I just cut it out. So then I'm going to take my skins and I'm going to adhere them to the back of this so that they are back to back. So I flip this over and I'm going to put my skins here and here and I'm going to go ahead and glue them down right away. So, um, and it looks like I cut into there so I got to be really careful. If you accidentally cut or there's a crack, you can use your pens to help hide that. So I'll show you that here in just a second because I think I'm gonna have to hide that one. So, so I get just a tiny bit of my Liquitex gloss medium and I just put on here, that's all you need for gluing these circles down to each other. And I'm just gonna put a little bit like that and then I'm gonna put my skin on top of here and just kind of rub it down and the same thing with this one here try to get it as close out away from that crack as I can but still being able to get a full circle okay and then I hear it there then I take my scissors and I know this is time consuming but let me tell you they look so much better than not taking the time to cut them circles and not to um, put them back to back and glue them and uh, it just looks gorgeous. Now you can just put one circle on the glass and I'll show you that in this next one that I do. You can do that if you want and then paint over it. I've done that before. So there's one disc done. And then here I'm gonna take another one and I keep my skins, I've got a pile of them. I did 96 of them last night, yesterday afternoon and last night. And um, I use those skins for magnets and I'll show you what I've got here in just a second. But I make sure as best I can that the white is covered and it's mostly in a circle um, like that. So that's, that's how I mostly do it. And let's see, there's a little bit of white right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off there. But I wouldn't have to do that either. Okay, so then I take these skins. Let me just show you. These are my two discs. And then I have these magnets that I make as well. That there's enough on there to make that. And this one I don't like as well. But, you know, I could find something like if the center was more like that. That would look really cool, right? So I keep these just in case I use those for that off to the side. All right, so 
let's get back to what we are doing. So I've got these two discs now and I take two glasses right there and these discs will go on the bottom. So then what I decide is which one, which side I like better from the top. So I put the glass down and I kind of decide, okay, that looks kind of cool. That looks kind of cool. Let's put this one. Which one do I like better? Oh, I think I like, ugh, that one's a tougher one. I think I like this one better with a deeper pink. And then what's gonna happen is that's gonna be my bottom. So that looks really pretty, right? Just like that. All right, so that's gonna be this one. And then this one, I think, I think I like that one better. All right, so then I have my two glasses. Let me put this more in the center for you. My two glasses, I've got, these are gonna be the bottoms that are gonna be seen from the top. So I keep them flipped up. Then I take my Liquitex medium and I put one dot, just one. That's all you need is one little dot in the center. And then I take my brush and I just gently brush it across. Um, if you overwork this or not put enough on here or put too much, you're going to see streaks from the other side. So um, I just kind of barely brush it on. Then I take my circle and I put it in my two fingers uh, side to side and I center it on here. Let me move this one off to the side so you can see better. I center it on here like that and then I take my finger because there's an indent and I push it down. And then I take it, oh, and it slid a little bit, so let's put that back in the center. And then I just let it kind of go all the edges and push that down. So let's do the other one again. So I take my fingers, put them like that, get the sides, press in the center. And yeah, this one, I must have had more uh, Liquitex on it than normal because it's sliding a little bit more. And then that's, what it looks like from the top, right? I don't know if you can see that very well, but those look really, really cool. So <clears throat> you can kind of see how I've got an edge right there that's kind of sticking out. So that's what I use the scissors for. So I put my hand on the bottom to keep it from sliding and I take my scissors just on the edge, not underneath. If you get underneath it, you'll actually cut it too close. So I take it on the edge and I just snip around the edge to make it so you don't see it from the top. And you can't catch then your finger on it later and peel it off, right? All right, so there's that one, it's done. So I'm gonna put that one off to the side and then I'm gonna look at this one. This one, it looks like um, it's got a little bit on this side over here. I'm moving it over just a little bit because I see some space that's not all the way to the edge. This one right here doesn't have space, all the way, it doesn't have something all the way to the edge. And actually that's not horrible. And so let me show you how I'm going to now uh, rectify that. So I'm gonna get these little skins out of the way. The next thing I do then is I use an old tape thing and I put it in the center of my tile and I grab a paint brush uh, pen, whichever one color you think would look the best. So for this one in particular, I think I can either do gold. Um, I probably could do like that pink if I really wanted it. Um, green, that gold there, but I think I'm just gonna do this gold. So, um, and I just take the it and I just put it on the edge and I go a little bit at a time circling this and if I need to get on the actual top of it then I do that and I you don't have to do this but this is just because I don't want to see that little white right of the skin that you can see when you look down on it right there so that's that white can you see that how oh, that's got some white right there so I'm just going to take my pin and go around it. And then sometimes I get it on the glass. So I use a paper towel and I just kind of circle it like this to get it off the glass. So it comes off nice. And then there you go. So that's the first one. 
Let me go ahead and do this one. And I, I put this here. It just helps me so I don't slide it off the tile. Um, it just is a, a little bit better for, uh, I don't know, maneuvering and being more exact as I'm trying to go around. Try not to get on the bottom and get into the actual painting. But if you do, the great thing about these pens is um, all you got to do is add a little bit of water and to like your... Um, paper towel or your finger and you can get it off so and I take a little bit of extra time I'm taking a little more time than I normally do for you guys right now it takes me about seven minutes from the time I decide to cut the skin till I get it prepped for um, for two glasses to get it prepped for um, resin okay so now that I've got the glass glasses done I go ahead and put them down. I grab my tape, my painter's tape, and I want to protect my glass from the resin. So I just tape down all four sides and I use it on the tile because here I'll show you why. So I cut on the tile so I don't cut anything. And then I use my tape on the tile because then I can go like this, get all my edges down, and then I just peel it up and it looks like that. Okay, so I'll do this one here again for you guys. And you probably can tell I'm from the Midwest in the United States because I say, you guys, you guys. Instead of, I used to live in Houston and I said y'all all the time in Texas. Hey y'all, but I don't know, I'm just no longer that. I'm a Midwest gal now. All right, and so I just peel that off and there I go. And now they are ready for resin, all right? So I'm gonna put them in the box and I'm gonna show you how protected they are back into the box. Then I take my glasses and I just put them down in here and look at how well protected they will be when I go to resin these. I'm gonna get going and I'm gonna do a few more for you. And if you, uh, I'll probably fast forward through this and slow down a little bit here and there, but for the most part, I'm gonna get these done. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna measure my resin and you're gonna need your PPE, which is personal protection gear. I'm outside, so I don't need a respirator. And really with this stuff, you don't need a respirator. Okay, the key to resin is to make sure that you measure the exact amount. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And I don't need much for these, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get my, let's see, this one will be the hardener and pour out a little bit in there. Not a lot. We'll go to one ounce. Okay, it's exactly 1.06. You need to be exactly the same when you add in your resin. So you got your hardener in there already. Now I gotta add in my resin. 1.06 will get us 12 or 2.12. 2.12. Point one, two point five, point zero five. I mean, two point one six. So I didn't get quite two point one twelve, but that's okay. All right, then you have to. Hey Siri, set timer. Set timer for three minutes. Three minutes starting now. So then you need to stir your resin for three minutes. This is a, I had a whole bunch of Panera Extra glasses from when we did a, um, uh, I don't know, catering thing. So I just have an extra one, so I'm using it. Since I'm just doing a little bit of it, I'm not doing a huge amount. I'm going to go ahead and just do it with this. Okay, so let me show you how I did my first coat of resin. So it was actually in the garage when it was super cold. So my resin was kind of thicker. So I ended up just spooning it in with a plastic spoon. 
um, on to each single one that was in the same box. I was freezing. <laughs> I couldn't believe how cold it was that I was doing this. And I really wanted to protect my family and the fumes. So I'm out in the garage in the middle of winter doing this. And I think it was... And I'm not kidding you, I think it was a wind chill factor that day of like 20 below zero. But anyway, I'm out there doing this and um, all for a fundraiser, right? You can kind of see it looks milky white and that's just because there's a lot of air bubbles in there. And so this first um, coat that I'm doing, I'm just going to kind of get the resin in the middle and then I'm going to spread it with my spoon and then I'll heat it with my heat gun. You do have to be cautious with resin, um, you know, getting on yourself, on your hands, and um, really, uh, depending on what type of resin you are using, um, it has quite a bit of fumes and it can cause respiratory problems. So I had decided that I was gonna go ahead and use a respirator here. And so I actually have a respirator, so I'll show you a picture of me <laughs> with the respirator on. Um, but <laughs> then I discovered that this particular resin I didn't need to, but yeah, it kept me warmer anyway. All right, well, let's take the heat gun and let's um, heat these up. And you kind of start high up and then you go down and you can kind of see how it's starting to like pop the bubbles, the air bubbles, and then you'll start to see it actually get warm and start moving a lot more than just popping the air bubbles. And it kind of looks like I'm moving fast, but I'm actually got this on a little bit faster mode so you can kind of look through this and watch through this a little bit you probably have already fast forward and if you haven't thanks for joining me and keeping going with me but now you can kind of see i'm getting a little closer to the actual um, wine glass to heat it up to heat that resin up and and pop those air bubbles that are in there because that's the big thing right you don't want that milky white you want it clear crystal clear so you you just need to make sure you heat it up enough that it's going to get rid of all those bubbles and it was harder to work with with it being so cold so just be aware of that when you are using resin and again on this i was worried about them the resin going over the side of the glasses and after the first coat and with the second coat i it didn't bother me because i just peeled it off i just spent the time and just peeled it off and yep it adds more time it does uh, but they look fabulous and I'm so looking forward to showing this to the group of people at my um, fundraising event. See how shiny it's getting? They're looking so good. I think all the air bubbles are popped now and I'm just kind of making sure that it gets all the way to the edges. And on that one, you can kind of see there's some bubbles on the, even the edges. Okay, so welcome back. Now that you have done your resin, I want to show you what I do next. So these I resined yesterday and um, I just want to tell you a couple tricks that if you would get some resin on here while it's still wet rubbing alcohol works really really great for these so i just wanted to kind of show you that um, it's not so good once it's dry but while it's still wet okay so the items that you're going to need are possibly some scissors a exacto knife or what or technically a utility knife um, and then i used a small one too in order to kind of bend to get to things so um, those are the tools that i use typically it's just this one but i do use those ones from time to time okay so the first thing that i do is i check to see if it is dry enough and um, again i did these yesterday so the reason why I'm going ahead and doing them right away is I don't want them to get too hard. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off. And then once the tape is off, you're gonna see that there is resin along here. Okay, so what I do is I take 
my X-Acto knife or what my husband calls a utility knife. And I just start in an area and I start, oops, I do it from the top. And I just put lotion on my hands, so that's not good. Let's get some gloves to make sure it doesn't slip because the worst thing you wanna do is to slip while you have a knife in your hand, right? Yeah, all right, you get my gloves on. All right, so now that I have this, what I do is I take it from the top, not from the bottom, because if I go like this, I tend to go into the design too much. So I go from the top and I start right here and I start cutting along the edge. Now careful of where your thumb is, careful where your other body parts are because if you accidentally like flip it you you've got to be careful there okay so i go along cutting that and then i discover i've got more i go on the top now just to make sure that all of the top is off you know what I mean? All the top is off. It's like all the resin is off the top of the area. So, did you see how that knife kind of went over here? It almost got me. So, you just have to be careful as you are doing these. And standing up where I'm at right now is just a harder way to do this. And honestly, the gloves are harder for me. So, So once I get that off, the sides off, it's warm or it's soft enough to kind of melt the sides. So then what I do is I take a paper towel or a towel and I just kind of friction it and then I meld the sides together. And I'm going to use that with my hands. I'm going to have to wash my hands all the lotion that's on them right now and what that <clears throat> does is it kind of warms up the sides and it just kind of gets the sides to be more of a gloss instead of a cut area okay and so there it is all done ready to go then I always check to see if there's like any um, on the glass just in case and if there would be I use this right here to scrape off the edges, right? Kind of go away from yourself, scrape off the edges of the resin, wherever that is. I see just a little piece right here. There, okay, so that one's done. All right, I'm going to stop this and come back and wash my hands from this grease that I have right now. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. So I've got my tape here, get that out of the way. That one is done, put it off to the side. So let's do this one. Um, let's go ahead and take off the tape. This one doesn't have as much on the edges as the other one did, but again, from the top, get my glasses on. I take the resin off and I do it on the day after I do resin because if I do it on two or three days later, it gets so hard that it's almost like glass and then it's really hard to get off. There. Okay, so now that I have my sides done, I can take my hand or a towel, like I did before, and I use friction to soften the edges because it's still 24 hours since I did my resin. So it softens the edges for me. So you should kind of see that I had, I actually had blue pen on that one. <laughs> 
me go get my towel. This is the one that I was using. So I just kind of use it friction and then I melt it. So there you go. And then I take this and I clean up my edges. Collects the pieces. All right, we'll do one more. Take the tape off. Nice and easy from the top. I just kind of saw it back and forth. I don't try to go too fast because then if I do, it'll like jerk up and I don't want it to hit me. Got to be very, very careful when you're working with sharp knives. Utility knife is sharp. Now on this one, there is some residue right here. that one is now done so looks like there's a little bit of resin right there take my towel friction and then I just kind of take my fingers and I push it into the sides and there you go thanks for joining me today and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell and if you like this video I bet you're gonna like these as well thanks a lot and have a great day bye bye